Good morning also to those inside here. Good to be with you here today, so welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus. This morning is the uh, 11th Sunday after Pentecost, and the Word of God reminds us today uh, of the the everlasting covenant that the Lord promises to us, the covenant of his mercy and grace that he gives to us each and every day. And we're reminded that there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let's join in our opening hymn. It's hymn 229, This Day at Your Creating Word. And just, I'd like you to just look at the opening lines of the various verses here. Verse 1, This day at your creating word, first o'er the earth the light was poured. And then verse 2, This day the Lord for sinners slain in might victorious rose again. Verse 3, This day the Holy Spirit came with fiery tongues of cloven flame. So what's the this day the hymn writer's talking about? He's talking about Sunday, uh, the, the first day of the week, the first day of creation, the day of Jesus' resurrection, the day of Pentecost. And that's why in the Christian freedom that we have, we especially have chosen Sunday to be a, a special day set apart for worship. In the Old Testament, of course, God commanded the obs observance of the Sabbath day, but that was Saturday. Uh, in the New Testament, we have the freedom to, to choose, and Sunday is, is the day that we have especially chosen, and that's, that's the reason for that. So let's join together in singing hymn 229, This Day at Your Creating Word. Please stand. To guide our worship today, we follow the order of service on page 38 in the front part of your hymnal, the service of the word. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. 
in countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of this forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. refuge in him. Your word, O oh Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you reveal your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace that we may obtain your promises and, be, and become partakers of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated. My God will supply all your needs. That's what the Apostle Paul tells the believers in the congregation in the city of uh, Philippi. And today's scripture lessons remind us that the Lord is always faithful to his promise to provide uh, everything that we need um, according to his, his wisdom and his grace and mercy. Our Old Testament lesson is recorded for us by the prophet Isaiah. This is in chapter 55, starting here at the first verse. This and all of the scripture lessons are printed on the last page of the bulletin, if you like to follow along there. This is the Lord's invitation to his banquet of salvation, a feast for all souls that he gives freely by his grace. The Lord says this, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, hear me, that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to, to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. This is the word of our Lord. 
Let's continue now with the Psalm of the day. Actually, it is a combination of two Psalms. It's Psalm 42 and 43 combined. You see that on page 82 in the front part of your hymnal. So let's join together in singing this combination of Psalms 42 and 43. Our reading from the New Testament letters is recorded for us once again in Paul's letter to the Romans. Today we're in chapter eight. Again, we've been following this series for quite a number of weeks in, in Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Today we are at chapter eight, starting here at verse 35, where uh, Paul is really reaching the climax of, of the heart of the message uh, of his whole letter to the Romans here. We'll come back to this word of God uh, for our sermon today. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Alleluia. Please stand now for our gospel lesson. 
The Holy Gospel is recorded for us by the evangelist Matthew. This is in chapter 14, starting here at verse 13. Now, what if what we need, whether that's something physical or spiritual, what, what if that were beyond the power of the giver? Well, in our gospel lesson, we are shown that that never needs to be something that we should be concerned about. Uh, the Lord has the power to supply whatever we need, and that's what he does according to his mercy and grace. I start here at chapter 14 at verse 13. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord. The congregation may be seated now as we join in the singing of the hymn of the day. It's hymn 349, Jesus Priceless Treasure, hymn 349.
Peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our living Lord and Savior. Amen. The word of God for a special attention today, as I mentioned, is our epistle lesson recorded for us by Paul in his letter to the Romans in chapter 8 here. Let me reread just the last couple of verses here. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of our God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, our Savior, we thank you for, for your loving kindness that you show to us each and every day. You do truly supply all of our needs of body and soul. We ask, Lord, that you would nurture our faith today with this word of peace and word of promise uh, from the Apostle Paul. Lord, guide our hearts and, Lord, strengthen our faith through this word of truth. Lord, we pray this all in your name, amen. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, the one who promises to provide for our every need and the one who carries through on that promise each and every day, fellow children of God. You know, it appears to me that there are a number of parallels in what we have been seeing going on in our country, you know, for the last couple of months or so, you know, with the protests and all of those things that have been taking place around our country. It seems to me that there are a lot of parallels with, with what took place back in the, the 1960s at the, the time of this often called the, the civil rights movement. Well, on the one hand, there are these, these crowds of, of people protesting and uh, uh, crying for justice and crying for equality and, and things like that it, in peaceful demonstrations that, well, that our Constitution guarantees. So that's one side, but then on the other side, you have just plain out and out criminal activities where people are, are destroying property and they are stealing and looting and shooting weapons and, and even, even killing people. But, but it seems like there, there's a similarity between now and, and back in the 1960s. And, and back then, there was a song that kind of came to be the anthem of of the civil rights movement, and that was the song, We Shall Overcome. And I think there's probably a lot of people today uh, who are trying to, to revive that thought and, and make that kind of the, the anthem of, of the, the protests today. But you know, what probably a lot of people don't know is that that, that song, We Shall Overcome, was actually based on a Christian hymn written by a Methodist minister uh, by the name of, of Charles uh, Tin, Tindley, and, and he wrote his hymn to express his faith in Jesus Christ and to express his certainty of salvation in Jesus Christ. And, and his hymn is entitled, I'll Overcome Someday. Well, the Apostle Paul, as he writes here, as I said, in this, in this climax se section of uh, Romans, and you know, the Apostle Paul called himself a Hebrew of the Hebrews, and it's typical of Hebrew writings that, that you put the most important thing right smack dab in the middle. You, you especially see that in the, the Psalms, the hymn book of the Old Testament believers, but you also see it here in, in Paul's letter to the, the Romans. Uh, here's the pinnacle, here's the high point of his letter, and, and he 
expresses his confidence in the Lord God and in the Lord's unfailing love. And so today we want to borrow the title of that, that protest song, song, if you want to call it that, uh, as it guides us in, in searching the scriptures today as, as we can say, we shall overcome. And the first thing that, that this word of God teaches us here, though, is, is that our situation might be desperate. And there's a reason for that, a very simple reason for that. The reason for that is because of our sinfulness. There, there is sinfulness in our own hearts. There is sinfulness in the world in general. And that's what the Apostle Paul's been talking about. Uh, back in, ch in chapter 7, uh, he talked about this, this struggle between the sinful nature that every one of us has. There, this war is going on. The sinful nature is warring against faith in our hearts and that, that war is constantly going on. And uh, the Apostle Paul understood that, that struggle very well and he expresses that back in, in chapter seven. Well, and then we come to chapter eight, the Apostle Paul reminds us that it's not just sin inside, but he says sin has even affected the world, the created world around us. Uh, earlier he had said this, uh, this was our, our, our epistle reading from two Sundays ago where he says, the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And you know, we see these things in the upheavals even in the created world uh, that, that if we just t t tune our ears to the, to the news and so forth, we see that they're happening all around the world, all around us. You know, situations of, of a danger and destruction and, and even death. And well, that's what the Apostle Paul observed and the Holy Spirit led him to talk about. The whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And then he says it's not just the creation groaning, he says we, ourselves grown inwardly as we wait. You know, as we wait for that day that Jesus promised us, that day that, that when he is going to return uh, in, in glory. Uh, he's, Paul says here, we ourselves grown inwardly. You know, and, and we might feel, we might feel so much of that, that feeling, uh, you know, maybe it's a feeling that, you know, all of the problems and trials of our lives just, you know, come, come washing over us like a tidal wave all at once. Or, or maybe it's just, you know, the day-to-day the, the -day struggle with difficulties just seems to wear us down uh, day by day. Well, the Apostle Paul talks about a lot of these things. He, he talks, he says there's this series of, of seven things that, that problems in this world that might plague us. Uh, he talks about, about trouble, and that, that word really has the, the thought of, of pressure, like something's weighing down on us, like there's some huge burden on our shoulders. Uh, he says trouble or hardship, and maybe that's a, a, it really has the picture of narrowness, like something's closing in on us, uh, you know, as we struggle with difficulties in this world. So troubles and hardships or persecutions, he says. And the picture there is, is really the thought of being pursued, being pursued by an enemy. Um, so persecution uh, or famine. Well, if you're being pursued by the enemy, you probably don't have much uh, opportunity to bring food along. So famine or nakedness, you probably don't have a chance to, to pack your clothes very much. Uh, or, or danger, just the, the danger of, of being assaulted by by all kinds of enemies, or, or sword, he says, and the, the word there is, is the, the little, the Roman short sword that's the, uh, kind of the street weapon of the day. Uh, so he says there's, there's all of these dangers, there's all of these difficulties, there's all of these things that just might seem like they're closing in on us all the time. 
And these are real, aren't they? They're real in the world, they're real in our lives, you know, but, but the truth is, don't we have to admit that so many of these things, you know, we, we really just are, are pretty sheltered from here, here in our country, but, but so many of these things are realities for Christians who are, are literally running for their lives because they are Christians in, in many parts of the world. That's, that's the, the situation, you know, things that we probably can't hardly even imagine. All of these challenges, all of these things that, that might put us in what might seem to be a, a very desperate situation. And you know what Paul says? He says, don't be surprised. In fact, he quotes the Old Testament scriptures here. He quotes from, from Psalm 44, which says, God foretold all of these things, these struggles that we will have as his people. He says, don't be surprised by that. I told you these things are going to come. You know, for your sake, the Psalm writer says this, and Paul quotes him, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. You know, and we're, when we are in the midst of these trials and difficulties, then that, that temptation is always so easy to come into our minds to wonder, you know, is, is God really there for us? Does Jesus still really, truly love me? You know, I, I, know, I know for God so loved the world, but, but you know, when you're in the midst of all of these things that might seem to be closing in on us and all of the struggles that we deal with, it's so easy to wonder, does Jesus really love me? And that's where the Apostle Paul comes with this, this absolute assurance here where he says that we are super conquerors in Jesus Christ our Savior. He says, in all these things, these things, think of that list again, trouble or hardship, uh, persecution, famine, uh, nakedness, danger or sword. He says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And that's God's word to us. And notice he doesn't say we will be more than conquerors. He says we are more than conquerors right now. And he doesn't say, you know, we, we might just escape, you know, if, but by the skin of our teeth and, and survive and, and somehow muddle through. That's not what he says. He, he did, doesn't even say we will be conquerors. He says that we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us, through Jesus, our Savior. And, and that's why, why he can speak with this, this absolute confidence here. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's that love that God has simply lavished upon us. That's what John writes in, in his first letter, uh, the third chapter. He says, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. A lot of times, you know, with the, the students like in confirmation class and settings like that, you know, I, I, I often ask them, you know, what does that mean to lavish? to lavish, and a lot of times they have trouble actually trying to put that into, into words. Well, it, it reminds me of what, something that happened decades ago when our kids were, were all still rather small. 
and grandpa and grandma were coming for a visit and it was months before Christmas time, uh, but they were going to be bringing their Christmas gifts along. So they had asked, you know, well, what, what do you think the kids would like? So, you know, we talked to them and we came up with these lists, you know, and, and uh, we, we sent them to, to grandpa and grandma. And then when they came for the visit, when they came for the visit, uh, you know, they just started taking these packages and packages out of their, their vehicle. And uh, th then it dawned on us that, that they didn't pick something out of that list. They got everything on the list. You know, and, and my, wife, my wife and I were saying, you know, that's not what we have it in mind. You're, you're, the thought was that you'd pick something out of the list, but you got everything on the list. Well, that's, that's lavish. Those are lavish gifts, and that's what our God does for us. He, he lavishes his gifts on us. Sometimes more than we recognize, and certainly more than most of the time we appreciate, he lavishes his love on us. And that's why Paul says here that we are more than conquerors. We're, we're not just survivors, we are conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We are victorious, victorious, because Jesus himself has been victorious for us. It's because Jesus has, has lavished his love on us by entering into our world and ultimately laying down his life for us on the cross at Calvary so that all of our guilt, all of our regrets, all of, all of our disobediences could be washed away in the sacrifice that he made for us. And because of that, he says, we are in Christ. That's one of Paul's uh, frequent expressions. He says we are, are in Christ. And maybe we can uh, particularly uh, relate to that thought, uh, you know, in, in these days as we, we deal with everything that's going on. Uh, you know, you go into the store and, and, you know, what do you see? There's that, that plexiglass shield that is, is there. Uh, you go talk to somebody and in, uh, you know, a business or something like that. A lot of times they're wearing a shield around their face. Um, it, it's, it's almost like there's this, this bubble of safety that, uh, that we want to be in because of the, the, the danger of the virus and so forth. So, but Paul often says we are in Christ as though we are in this, this bubble of safety surrounded by Christ, protected by Christ, receiving the, the lavish gifts of Jesus our Savior, and that's why he says that, that we are victorious because Jesus has already won the victory and in him that victory is ours as well. And that's why, that's why we can sing not only we shall overcome, but we can sing we have overcome, not because of our strength or our power, but because of Jesus, our Savior. In him, we are more than conquerors. And that's what makes all the difference in our lives. Yes, yes, there, there still are the trials and the problems in our lives, but don't lose sight of the fact that the victory has been won and that that victory is ours. We are more than conquerors. So may that message continue to give peace to our hearts and give joy to our lives as we let that light of our faith shine out in confidence as, as we say the same thing the Apostle Paul does, that I'm convinced that all of these things, that, that there is nothing, not height or depth or, or the demons or angels, pow, no power in all of the world that can separate us 
from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May that message continue to be the foundation of our lives. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you would please open your hymnals to page 41 in the front part of your hymnal, uh, you'll see there the Apostles' Creed. Let's join together with Christians around the world and throughout the ages as we express our uh, conviction, our confidence in the Lord's word as we make confession of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated once again. As far as the the gathering of our offerings go. If you like to, if you have prepared an offering, uh, the offering plate is on the stand at the, the back of the sanctuary. You can leave that uh, in the offering plate as, as you leave uh, the sanctuary today. Let's bow our heads then in prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, our gracious Savior, we come to you today uh, asking for your strength and your blessing upon us once again. Lord, oftentimes when we are in the midst of our struggles, we do not feel very victorious. So often uh, we, we might even be tempted to, to give up uh, in the midst of the, the pains that we suffer and the, the trials that we undergo. But Lord, we ask that you would strengthen us by, by the power of your word. And we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to remind us each and every day that, that we are not only conquerors through faith in you, but that we are even more than conquerors because you have won the victory for us as you offered yourself as the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world on the cross. And you prove that by your resurrection from the grave. You sit at the right hand of the heavenly Father, ruling all things. And Lord, we ask that, that you would give us that conviction, that assurance that, that there is nothing, nothing in all creation that can separate us from your love. Lord, be with us and bless us as we shine out with the, the light of that message of your love. Lord, Help us to, to give testimony boldly uh, to all that you have done, to that, that marvelous victory that you have won for us and for all of the world. And Lord, confident of your mercies, we also bring you our special petitions. Lord, we pray for those who are dealing with health matters, uh, including Eleanor Melberg, who was hospitalized in Aberdeen this past week and uh, now is back at the Wookiees Care Center. Uh, we ask, Lord, for your blessings upon her, as well as Ron Schmidt, Herb Wegman, Alma Haas, Alan Schmidt, Eric Meyer, Carrie Workentine, Laren Workentine, Shirley Dreyer, Marlene Hink, and Larry Stafford. Lord, we ask that you would watch over each one of these individuals with your loving care. Lord, remind them daily that they are more than conquerors 
through faith in you. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them not only spiritually but also physically and that that you would bring strength uh, to their bodies as well. Lord, we commend them to your love and care. And Lord, we also add our prayers of thanksgiving and praise together with John and Vernell Klaus, uh, Carolyn's, Carolyn Bader's parents who uh, are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary this week. Uh, Lord, we are grateful for the, the kindnesses and your mercies that you have shown to them constantly uh, through these uh, six decades uh, of their married lives together. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to open your hand of blessing upon them. Lord, cause them to be blessings to many others as well. Lord, we commend them to your loving care. And Lord, we also uh, ask for your blessings uh, on our, our nation and uh, our world as, as we continue to deal with the, the pandemic. And uh, we ask, Lord, that you would be with those whose, whose bodies have been afflicted by this virus and those who are struggling with their health. Uh, we ask for your blessings on those who are caring for, for those individuals and those involved in, in medical research as well. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would remind them, uh, remind all uh, of the greatness of your loving kindness. And Lord, we also pray for the family of Pastor George Enderley, the father of Pastor Mike Enderley, whose soul uh, you called to yourself uh, this past Thursday. Lord, we thank you for, for that washing of holy baptism which he received in his, his younger years. Uh, we thank you for the nurturing of your gospel that, that he enjoyed throughout his life. We thank you for the opportunities that you gave to him to be a bold a proclaimer of your gospel message. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort all who mourn his departure from this world. Comfort them with the assurance that his soul is with you in that perfect peace of heaven. And Lord, we also pray for uh, Pastor-elect Chester Reineman, who is scheduled to be uh, ordained and installed in our congregation in Calgary, Alberta, Canada this afternoon. We ask, Lord, for your blessings on this proclaimer of your gospel and, and also upon the congregation that he serves. Lord, help them to work together to, to be bold uh, preachers of your gospel message. Lord, we bring all of these prayers uh, before you in your holy name and we gather all of our prayers together in the prayer which you yourself have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive then with peace and joy in your hearts the blessing of our gracious Lord God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Let's close our service this morning with the singing of hymn 445, Through Jesus, Blood, and Merit, hymn 445.
Good morning again. Good to be with you here today. Uh, just a few things I wanted to, to mention. Uh, I, I mentioned last Sunday that uh, the Lord called Pastor uh, Gilbert Bundy home to, to glory a, a couple, three weeks ago. And uh, I am still waiting for that DVD. His funeral service of victory was uh, at St. Martin's in Watertown. I am waiting for that DVD to, to arrive. So uh, when that does come, I will try to let you know if you're interested in watching that. Uh, also, just uh, for your information here, we have decided on a, on a youth activity and we're planning on an o online bingo event. So uh, if you're, you know somebody who's interested in that, please let me know. Uh, also, I have been working on, uh, well, in the midst of the Clo uh, the COVID I issue here, um, you know, struggling to, to minister to those in, especially in nursing homes and our care facilities and things like that, or, or in their own homes. Uh, and uh, uh, if you know of anybody who, who would, would welcome a visit, please let me know. Uh, I was able to, to uh, go into to Wookiee's uh, care center uh, the other day, uh, I, I might have been the first one, not, not a resident or not an employee, perhaps the first one who was, has been in there for uh, months and months. Uh, but uh, that things some, somewhat are opening up, and, and so there is a, a, a broader opportunity. But uh, anyway, if you, you can help me uh, to, to identify people who, who, would, uh, be, who would welcome a visit, I'd appreciate that. Uh, also, I mentioned in the... the uh, the prayers, uh, the ordination installation service of Pastor-elect Chester Reinemann in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, you know, even in normal times, uh, crossing the border to, to live there permanently can be a challenging thing that you have to jump through a lot of hoops. And, uh, uh, of course, in the COVID situation, it was just been multiplied by many times. So we're, we're grateful that uh, he is, is there in Calgary and uh, will be, God willing, starting his, his ministry uh, there this afternoon. So please keep, keep uh, him and the congregation in, in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, on the... On, on the pew, there, there are a couple of things that were, are there. One is a, a little, it's a, on this goldenrod paper, this, uh, the Dakota Montana District Student Aid Fund, uh, that's kind of just for your information at this point, uh, for, it's a fund that has been set up to help students who are attending our worker training uh, schools, especially the college and seminary. Um, part of the upcoming Centennial observance will be gathering an offering that will include uh, include the the district student aid fund to, to help those uh, students prepare. Uh, also, I, maybe I could mention that there's probably a few of those uh, in focus magazines in the in the pews here from Martin Luther College. Just yesterday, I spoke with a new new president, uh, Pastor Richard Gurgle, and I was. Uh, just kind of bending his ear a little bit and, and wondering what things look like as they're about ready to start the new school year there. Uh, been, I think, quite a concern that perhaps a, a number of people might be de delaying their uh, preparation because of the pandemic situation. It sounds like that is really not the case, uh, that there's a, 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 a rather substantial incoming freshman class and, and they're expecting in-person uh, instruction and so forth to be happening. That's a couple weeks down the line, something like that. Uh, but anyway, another, another uh, thing to put on your prayer list there as well. Uh, to, to be praying for those who are preparing for the ministry. With that, uh, we wish you the Lord's blessings. Uh, God be with you and continue to strengthen uh, you as, as we, we serve him in this world, knowing that, that we are more than conquerors through the one who loves us. So God be with you and bless you this week. Thank you. <laughs>